Hey, it's Dr. Nissa here again. Gyms are finally back open. Let's talk about how you can stay safe when you go back to the gym. That's up next. Okay, so let's talk about how you can stay safe, what precautions you can take now that gyms are starting to open back up, what can you do to keep yourself safe when going back to the gym? So the first thing that we need to do is we need to identify the two types of people that actually go to the gym. You'll basically fit into one of two categories if you're going to the gym, and those two categories are you're either trying to maintain your fitness, you're already in pretty good shape, maybe you're training for a specific event or you're, you know, you're getting older but you're just trying to stay in shape so you're exercising in order to maintain your physical fitness. The other group, and this is sometimes even more prominent, and you'll especially see this during you know, the New Year's resolution kind of situation, is the people that are trying to get into shape. Maybe you're not in the best shape at that point and you're looking to exercise, which is a fantastic way, obviously, of getting back into shape, but you're looking to try to improve your health through your physical fitness, through exercise. So the people that need to try to maintain or that are trying to just maintain their physical fitness and their health, what their primary responsibility is going to be is to avoid infecting others. So you want to avoid contracting COVID-19 and other diseases for that matter as well, but specifically we're talking about COVID-19 here because even though you might not respond all that negatively to COVID-19, maybe you're very physically fit, have no underlying health conditions, you could still contract it, not even know it, and then be passing it along as you leave the gym to other people. So you'll wanna take precautions while you're at the gym, but it's most likely safe for you to go to the gym as long as you take the proper precautions. Now, on the other side of the coin again, the people that are trying to get into shape, perhaps they do have underlying health conditions. They have underlying health problems. Possibly they're significantly overweight, they have possibly diabetes, breathing problems, everything else that can, go that can go along with it, everything that we already know that causes the more severe symptoms when you contract COVID-19. So this is what these people need to do. They need to weigh out the risk of contracting COVID-19 and then possibly becoming very ill with the benefits, and I know this is cut off just a little bit, but the benefits of improving their health. Obviously, if you're going to the gym, you're going to be improving your health quite significantly. So we want to improve our health. We want to do away or mitigate against those underlying health conditions as much as possible, but we have to weigh that against the risk of potentially contracting COVID-19 and then becoming significantly ill. Gyms are a tricky place. You know, you're sweating. Obviously, there's possibly close contact with another person. So it's more tricky than just going to the grocery store um, and, you know, those type of situations where you can really be spaced out. You don't need to be next to somebody else. You're not sharing, um, you know, equipment and, and, you know, sweating on it and those types of things. So we need to really understand which group we fit into and then understand the risks involved before we talk about what we actually need to do to be safe. Let's talk about that next. Okay, so now let's talk about specifics. What are these specific things that that you can do when you go back to the gym to minimize your chance of contracting a communicable disease like COVID-19. What are the things that you can do to help minimize that risk? Gyms, a lot of gyms, uh, all gyms, let's say, are doing this. I'm gonna do a couple of gym reviews coming up on the specifics of what different gym brands are actually doing to minimize the risk of people contracting COVID-19. So they are trying to help out. They're trying to set up kind of the framework, but there are specific things that you can do to help minimize that risk. So before we get into it, there's an old saying, the only way to not get pregnant, 100% effective form of birth control is abstinence, is to not have sex, period. So the only way to completely 100% have no risk of contracting COVID-19 at the gym is to not be in the gym. When you're around other people, when you're on sweaty machines, and you, know, you never know what's gonna happen. So there's always going to be risk. We're talking about minimizing that risk. Okay, let's, let's look at the list. All right, so the number one thing that you can do to minimize your risk of contracting COVID-19 
is distance. This is all over the news, it's everywhere. Social distancing, personal distance, um, whatever you wanna call it, it's keeping yourself away from other people. The number one way that COVID-19 is transmitted from one person to another is if they're in close contact and their respiratory droplets interact with each other. That's how COVID-19 is traditionally passed along. So if you keep yourself far enough away from another individual, you will minimize your risk of contracting the disease. That's the number one thing that you can do. The second thing that you can do, and again, this goes along with keeping your distance, is just go at less busy times. If there's less people in the gym, you have less of a chance of contracting COVID-19. There's less of a chance that somebody with COVID-19 will be in the gym. If the gym is absolutely packed, if you're going at nine in the morning, six at night, you know, the traditionally really busy times for a gym, you're gonna be interacting with a lot more people. Potentially, they're gonna be much closer to you. So if you go at a, a lesser busy time, Time, you can minimize that interaction. So that's number two. The number three thing that you can do, and this is very, very important, is clean your equipment. Obviously, you wanna clean your equipment, wipe it down, but you wanna do it before you use the equipment as well as after. You wanna do it before and after. People are going to be cleaning the equipment, but they're also gonna have a lapse in memory, a lapse in judgment. They're gonna be thinking about something else and they're gonna to forget to clean that piece of equipment and then you're gonna come along and use it and not even know that they didn't clean it. Now, more and more reports are coming out that it's more difficult to contract COVID-19 through touching a surface, but, there's, but it's also well, well known that COVID-19 does live on surfaces for an extended period of time. So if you've got a really sweaty machine and somebody didn't wipe it down, it does increase that risk of contracting. So make sure you're wiping the piece of equipment down before and after you use it just to be a good neighbor. All right, the next thing you can do, and again, this is just limiting your contact, is shower and change at home. So if you come into the gym, you do your workout, and then you just get out of there, you're limiting your contact with other people. If you're not in the shower, you're not interacting with anybody in the locker room, you're just minimizing your contact. So again, it goes back to contact and how many people you're contacting with. I'm gonna give you one more. So the other thing you can do, and this is gonna be a very unpopular one, but some gyms are actually mandating it, and again, I'm going to talk about this coming up in a future video, is you can use a mask. It's hard to work out with a mask. Um, if you, and here's the example that I like to, to use, and I'm, I'm watching all these odd uh, sports on TV now because sports are just starting to come back around. Team sports in America have not started as of the filming of this video, but other sports have. Soccer in Europe, uh, I was watching Korean baseball the other day. Here's the interesting thing is I was watching this Korean baseball game and the umpires all had masks on, but none of the players did. None of the European soccer players are playing in masks. So what that's telling you is it's very obvious. Using a mask minimizes or it reduces your athletic performance. So it's gonna minimize your performance and what you get out of a workout. So you can use a mask, but if you're training really, really hard, it's going to make it much more difficult. So that's another thing that you can do is use a mask. All right. So so that is the list. These are the best precautions to minimize your risk for contracting COVID-19. Now let me hear from you. In the comments section below, let me know if you've gone back to the gym and are you using some of these strategies? Is your gym implementing some of these strategies? Do you have to wear a mask? Do you not? What gym are you going to? I'd love to hear it in the comments section below. All right. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and I will catch everyone in the next video.